All right. Well, hey, we are here. It's Robert and Brandon. We are. We are. Yes. It's kind of been a interesting roller coaster of a night and morning to get ready for digging deeper. So <laughs> this was supposed to be uh, hosted by me, and I was going to interview Pete because Pete preached the episode of Meltdown this past Sunday at Rice yep. City. Did a great job talking about the Book of Job. I did had all my questions, and then um, what do you know? Pete is sick again. Uh, what? He's no, sick Pete again. is sick. I've <laughs> I mean, never seen such a thing. Well, who would have thought that someone that only consumes Diet Coke six times a day and no vegetables would be sick again? Uh, I mean, he's <laughs> he's even allergic to lean meat. So you we know. already knew he's allergic to people. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and now he's Poor allergic guy. to lean meat. <laughs> the guy is out Water. on his couch and he's just going to listen to this and just be ridiculed for his immune system that is non-existent apparently. Yeah. Um, so, so now that we've shown that we are a loving and life-giving <laughs> church who brings hope and healing in Jesus' name to our own staff. <laughs> We're praying for healing for yeah. him, specifically in Jesus' name, because that's all, that's his only hope. Yeah, but so. in all seriousness, we are a day late uh, in getting this up, and Robert yeah. and I are kind of improv on the fly, and yeah. Ben also uh, was just trying to get everything together. So grateful for everybody making it happen, and we, in all seriousness, are praying for Pete, yeah. as he's not feeling well and pretty sick, so, um, but we're probably not going to, not probably, we will not be talking about uh, his message, and decided that instead today, for a few minutes, we're just going to call an audible and do a Christmas offering edition of Digging Deeper. That's awesome. Um, because we are in the uh, thick of getting ready for the Christmas offering on Sunday, December the 10th. Yeah. And so, so what do you want to talk about well, in terms of the Christmas offering? Let's let's so, so let's talk I want to know where did this um I I've seen other churches do generosity pieces or especially around like Christmas or Easter and things like that and really try to gather people together to be radically generous. But for the context here at Rice City Church, what we do is has some uniqueness to it. How did you come up with this crazy idea and what made you say Yes, we should go ahead, especially as a new church plant, by the way. Yeah. Like that's what I'm more interested in because when you're a little bit more established, it's easier to be generous. I think that's true individually as well as organizationally. But when you were a brand new church plant and you're like, are we going to make the bills because we're trying to, <laughs> you know, get this thing off the ground? Are we going to be able to go to that next stage? You know, what made you say, let's give it all away? Well, the the Christmas offering actually started as a way to try to get the church to really rally behind church planting. So we were a church plant, okay. but a part of us starting was us starting with kind of being pregnant, <laughs> like that we were going to plant more churches yeah. after we started. That's and good. one of that, one of those types of um, focuses was going to be planting churches internationally. And so when I was raising uh, money to come out here to start Rise City, I was also raising money for a church plant internationally, knowing that we wanted to hopefully start something uh, in the next, you know, first year or so. Cool. And um, we raised that money, and the, the first Christmas offering was really a way to bring everybody uh, that was a part of the church early on to feel like they had some investment in this church plan. So I had raised the money, uh, and it ended up being like $90,000 to start this church in Bolivia. And we wrote the check for 90000 but that money came from outside supporters. It wasn't people here at Rise City. Okay. And so knowing that there was um, in the area in Aurora, Bolivia, where we were going to plant this church, they had a high level of infant mortality rate. Um, that Compassion International, which is our partner, mm -hmm. had, a, had a way for you to really rally around the mothers in that village to help decrease the infant mortality rate through education, through immunizations, through um, different... Um, medical products, stuff yeah. like that. So the goal was to raise $10,000. And so we decided that first Christmas, let's get the church to raise $10,000. And and then that will like be kind of our buy-in to um, this church plant. And so we cast vision, did all this kind of stuff. And that first year we had $14,000 come in. Oh my and goodness. that was like, oh my gosh, like, like we started, we exceeded yeah. our hope and all that stuff. And that was, we just, we, Felt like it was a good time to do it during Christmas because you know it's the kind of the time of giving and stuff like that. Yeah. But then when we saw that happen, it was like, okay, well, what about next Christmas? And we thought, well, we want to stay in the same vein of generosity, which we saw people get really excited about. And so the next year, we didn't actually have a um, a financial number that we're going for or a particular initiative. It was more sponsoring children in that particular through compassion through compassion in that particular yeah. uh, area in Aurora, Bolivia. And so our goal was to see 100 children from that area get sponsored. And the sponsorship was at that time, I think about 
32 or $33 a month. Now, it, you know, with inflation, it's like 39 <laughs> or $40, something like yeah. that. Um, but we had over 100 kids that next year that got sponsored. And, and that was a huge win. And at that point, we had the 10,000, but actually it was 14,000 that came in. We had 100 kids sponsored. And then we had the merger with Harvest. So we, we were moving into this merger and we thought, what would be a great way to bring everyone together? Yeah. And that's really when the idea of like, let's do a Christmas offering and let's have everyone give sacrificially together, which will hopefully kind of really help our churches, Rise City and Harvest come together and then also make an impact in the community we're going into. And so that first Christmas offering- Yeah, what did that look like? Well, as it's structured as it is now, so the first time we started picking initiatives okay. was like, let's have five initiatives, $25,000 each. And it was like nuts because we've, we sponsor kids, we said this, but like to jump to let's $100,000 in one yeah. weekend. 125. 125, yeah. yeah. And I think at that time, our probably our b- general monthly giving was around $50,000 a month. <laughs> so you're like, okay, well. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see what happens. Um, but that was going to provide clean drinking water for that church there in Bolivia. Uh, and then we also had some different other initiatives and things like that. Um, and we had about $153,000 come in. Wow. And at that point, that was like year four, it was like, this thing's got legs and this thing's incredible. And I'm loving watching people give and people are getting creative of how they're doing it. And, and then from that point on, we just begin each year kind of prayerfully setting initiatives and rallying people around the cause and... Um, yeah, so it's, it's, so it's cool. been pretty cool to see where it's, where it's come from, from where it started. And, and you mentioned that people get creative in the way that they give to the Christmas offering. Yeah. You know, I think that there's probably a lot of people that you're like, you know, the, the ask is, is would you consider $650? Yeah. Which um, that's also increased over time <laughs> because sure. of inflation. <laughs> inflation. And also I think that as a church, we can keep taking keep steps yep, yep. To, to, to be more generous, you know, generosity is a key part of our discipleship. And so keep on growing in that as we grow in everything else. And so when, when you hear that number though, some people are like, how do I do that? You know, like that sounds like not just sacrificial. That seems, some people would say that's foolish. Some people would say, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to actually not be able to pay my bills or something like that. What are some of the most creative ways or even Mm. the most faithful ways that you've seen people like find ways to give and contribute? Probably the most faithful ways is there are definitely people that that start saving like January yeah. leading up to the next year. Like um, I know some people in our church that do different arts and crafts, and mm-hmm. so they are making different uh, dif- different you know projects and then selling those and all year and save, long. all year yeah. long and saving that money up. Um, I know we had a bunch of teenagers last year, some of them that that did like individual like holiday greeting cards yep. and sold all those and used the money for the Christmas offering. Uh, I know people who've given blood <laughs> that, that said, hey, we're gonna give blood and they're gonna pay me for that and that money's gonna go to the Christmas offering. Wow. Um, people that have set aside tax refunds and knowing, hey, I got this in May, but I'm gonna save it until December. Um, trying to think, we've, we've seen people that have done different like um, garage sales, Cookie recycling. sales, recycling. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ways in which people get creative. Um, I know one family years ago that decided not to go on vacation and said, this is what we want to give to the Christmas offering instead. Like, Pretty awesome. Um, so there's been a lot of those types of stories um, that are they're really inspiring and just that it's thoughtful versus something that's just like last minute. Like, Because reality is a lot of people living, especially in our context, um, if you wait to the last minute to think of how I'm going to give $650 or more, yeah, they're like, oh, crap. Like, how would I? How yeah. would I? Yeah, like there's yeah. not a lot of margin there. And so I think that, that that's something that, um, that I'm, I'm, I'm just proud of watching how many mm-hmm. people think proactively of how they can give generously for the offering. Now, you know, in our context, people are like, I've watched it. People get excited about it. They yeah. start preparing all year long, like you say, um, things like that. For someone outside of Rice City Church, or even maybe outside of the church as a whole, they see this and they probably yeah. ask a big question: Why? Like, why would people give? Why would people make plans? Why would people sacrifice vacations? Why would people, you know, recycle and make crafts and do all these different things? What drives people? Do you think? to get engaged and involved in this to the point where every year we have surpassed our goal, right? Like there's yeah. never been a year, I don't think that we've not gone over yeah. what our target goal was as far as that generosity. Yeah. What is driving people to just give and give and give? 
Um, I, I think I think there's probably a lot of factors. I think that there's I think people like to be a part of something bigger than themselves, and yeah. this is something that really rallies people collectively as a community to mm-hmm. to be in something way bigger than just what's happening here at Rise City. Um, I think that people start to really taste the fruit of what Jesus said is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And as over years we've been able to share stories that have come from people's generosity or they've witnessed, you know, when cars are given away Mm -hmm. or um, a few years ago, there was a prosthetic leg that was able to be um, given or we didn't give it, but you know what I mean? (laughs) Like paid for it, then this surgically given to this uh, young woman, things like that, that they're just like, they tangibly see the fruit of their generosity that yeah. that's inspiring to them. Um, and I just think that, I think it, it just, it goes beyond buildings, electricity, personnel costs, like things like that are necessary in general giving. Mm-hmm. But I think people get excited when they see tangible life impact and even life change yes. from their sacrificial giving. Needs being met. That needs being met. May yeah. not be met otherwise or yeah. things getting started in Bolivia that they would maybe never yeah. have. And yeah. it's like, it's pretty amazing to be part of something like that. Yeah. There is one initiative that is there all the time. Right. And I'm, I'm wondering how did this come about as well as how have you seen it kind of take legs of its own? And it's that initiative, your nomination nations, right? Where people just, if you're not familiar with this, it's basically where people will go on our website and they can nominate individuals, organizations, things like that on their own to actually just receive, it used to be called blank check, right? Yeah. Blank check. So like a check in the mail with a letter from, you know, from the church, from you that just lets them know God loves you. He sees you kind of is caring for you, but it's just this check that goes out to all these people. Yeah. How did that start? And then how have you seen it kind of take legs of its own <laughs> to the point where we're like, you know, I had someone come up to me on Sunday and they were like, I need to know, is it, is it a hundred? It's, it's, it's capping at a hundred, you know, nominations. And I said, yeah. yeah. And they're like, like, why are you guys capping at that? And it's like, well, it's a lot. First of all, like, <laughs> you know, yeah. I think it's a lot, yeah. but um, we just, you know, it's gotten legs of its own and it's yeah. kind of expanded to the point where it's like, in order to make it tangible, we need to kind of create some parameters. Yeah. So tell me about that story. How did it come about? And then how, how has it kind of taken legs of its own? The two ways that that particular initiative came about, one was as a small young church, mm-hmm. you get lots of requests uh, and people in the church to say, hey, we should, we should rally around this. We should give to this. We should do this, this, this. And you're trying to like somewhat be strategic in what you give to, but you you start to quickly be aware of just how many needs there are in the community, great organizations, all these things. And so part of it is like, I want us to, as a church, be able to like have strategic partners that we give to consistently on a monthly basis. But I also, I see value in people seeing other people yeah. and and knowing where the needs truly are. I, it'd be arrogant on our end to think that we know where everything is to be, you know, Absolutely. allocated. So the Christmas offering, your nominations became something that was like, well, what if we just on this way gave people an opportunity to share with us the organizations that they love, as well as people that they know. Um, we can't do this on a repeated monthly basis, but we can do this to make a drop in the bucket one time a year. And so that was that was the thought of it and just saying, yeah. let's see if we can do a catch-all. And, and it's been cool. Like we've been we've been really exposed to a lot of incredible people and organizations through this. I agree. Um, and it's another way also when I get like um, people that come and say, Hey, would you would rise city search consider making a donation? Or I, I can always point like, Hey, wait till December nominations open up. We'd love to give to you, but that's the way in which we give is yeah. through that. If it's not, if it's outside of our strategic um, partnerships. Um, the other one was um, there was a book by Timothy Keller. I believe it was called generous orthodoxy. Hmm. And in that book, he addresses giving money and giving money to people that would waste it. And his contention is that, yes, you've got to be wise, but there's times in which giving, because God promised you to give, is just what you do, and they may waste it. And if you end up coming to know that they wasted it, Welcome to seeing the world through the eyes of the Lord, because yeah. do you yourself not waste at times God's generous Good generosity word, in your way, right? And I thought, this is going to have a lot of possibility, because we don't like say, hey, you're nominated for this particular reason. Like yeah. people tell us like, hey, so-and-so really needs a new stove. I don't know. Yeah. Um, we just send the check. 
Sure. We so don't follow up to see if they bought yeah, the I stove. They might, they might have bought the stove. They might have went on vacation. They might, they, and some people are like, well, you know, some of these people, like, they might have used to buy alcohol. They may have. Yeah. And I, and I just saying that's like, I hope not. We but hope not. God is not always strategic and like wise, as we'd say, in the way that he lavishes generosity. He's, it's he's a word. prodigal, right? He, yeah. He's a, he's a spendthrift. He's lavish. He's like kind of reckless, if you'd say, like, that's the whole Luke 15 of just forgiving and giving. And so I don't want to do that with everything, but in this in this particular arena, this is a way for us also to say you never know. We can be you radically never generous, yeah, and without having to weigh all the the responsibilities. And it usually on the back end, yeah. and usually it's more than the money. Yes, because because someone at least being told someone sees you, God loves you, God provides for you, like that deposit. They may waste that money, but they won't forget that. And and then, so yes yeah it provides a good reputation for the for the Church of Jesus Christ and for Rice City but mm-hmm. but but I also just know there are a lot of stories in heaven that we're going to hear because someone yes. got a check randomly and and they're like I cannot believe that just happened that has to be of the Lord and I know some of the stories yeah. you know yeah. yeah and you hear all the stories that come out of the nominations that our church makes or people make and um, it's always powerful because not only do we find out about needs that we would have never known, we get to see life change we may have never get to be a part of right. if it wasn't for people in our church connecting and saying, we should really like rally around this yeah. or this person, this organization. And so I've seen some amazing life change. I've seen people get healed. I've seen people come to church and find Jesus yeah. through that. So it's been pretty incredible. So what are some of the nominations that have just been near and dear to your heart over the last i mean how long has it been since this the beginning of Rice Church? S- no yeah. the nominations piece started i think we moved in here so this is our sixth or seventh well year. whether it's nominations or just initiatives as a whole oh, okay what are some things that you've been like this is really special yeah i mean i think that um there was one year that i went around and kind of did a wish list of local churches and connect with pastors and, and yeah that's that's a tricky thing because you don't want to come off as like it can be looked as arrogant. Hey, we're gonna have the money. We're gonna give it to you and help you out. Like I see that. But it was like a connection with friends and saying, you know, we we believe what we're doing is in partnership with what you're doing because we're the same, you know, the same family. And so that year, I think we gave seventy five thousand dollars to different churches. And I thought that what rapport that built and synergy, even in in terms of even we planted some churches and helped other churches jump into the church planting game because of that. Yeah. That was a special one where we, like I said, I think there's 15 or 16 churches that we were able to give money to. Um, every year we give a car away. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So it's so Maybe fun. it's the, it's just it's fun, the kind man. of the, like whatever, it's like so TV cool. shows and stuff when you see like, oh, there's a new car. Like, oh, like a, a brand new you car. Can't, you can't it's get, that never new. gets old when you yeah. show up like that. There was one year that we got a, it's like a 15 passenger van because his family had like yep. 100,000 kids or something like that. And so not that many. Um but that was amazing because I remember driving there Christmas Eve and it was freezing cold for us out here and like just showing up. That was awesome. Um, you know, there's some things that with school teachers that we've been able to, yep. to bless school teachers and say, hey, we see you, especially in the COVID years when like they were just kind of just going through the ringer. For real. Um, that was, that's been really positive. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's, there's I, it's really hard. Like, it's crazy to think about how many different. One year we were able to give $100,000 to the International Justice Mission, which makes a significant impact in the lives of, of, of girls and boys that are trafficked. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just, there, I love them all, to be honest. Um, but the year that Jamie and I were able to go and hand deliver the check to the, to the girl that needed a new prosthetic leg, that was mm-hmm. pretty crazy. <laughs> um, and to stay and maintain connection with her post that, you know, so. That is awesome. Pretty cool. You know, it's cool too, because as you introduce different initiatives, one of the things that I've noticed, and I just talked to someone who was, who brought up International Justice Mission, Mm -hmm. and um, people are are made aware of these organizations and ministries and Christians outside of Rice City Church that are doing amazing things for the kingdom of God and taking care of people. And so, you know, it's pretty awesome to get to even open the eyes and kind of be aware of our partners mm-hmm. in the ministry, you know, and, and other entities that we get to partner with and, and, and build the kingdom with and all those kind of things too. So it's pretty awesome to actually just even get to be exposed to those things in that yeah. way. Yeah. Let me ask, we have Christmas offering coming up now. Yep. Um, what are some of the initiatives and tell me why you're getting pumped about them? Well, we've got the 
your nomination, so that's always fun. We haven't always we haven't looked yet at all the nominees that have come in, but that's always a fun day at staff to be like, oh my gosh, look at this! Like yep. this is so cool to be able to be a part of these things. Um, we're trying something different this year. We're actually it's different, but it's similar. So we're okay. the one I'm really excited about is, is as yourself. And when we first started as a church at Hill Creek School. We did this in a very small fashion, um, and I actually did this when I was a college pastor. Just this this notion of like, hey, let's get money, yeah. get groups, contribute what you can, and then go out and bless people. And so, for us to, you know, God willing, have a hundred thousand plus dollars that we're going to be able to rally our church and to go out into all the different communities, neighborhoods, and, and areas of their kind of where they where they live and abide and do life like and for them to be able to be creative figure out how they can bless the people around them i think it's gonna be exciting to see how that yep. transpires um and it puts people um on mission so it's not just giving but they're actually going and yeah. maybe have to even like open their mouth and maybe share a little share bit your faith yeah. and things like that yeah. so so that one's pretty awesome um so working on the details but they'll be in the spring so i i think that's gonna be a lot of fun me too um and then, you know, next week, uh, Shankar Pawar will be on the podcast with me. Um, he is one of our new partners uh, that's in India, Mumbai. And to see how the gospel of Jesus Christ is just exploding it really in, the, is. in the Hindu world, um, and, the, and there particularly, his, his focus with the Banjara people and the very place that if people are familiar with Slumdog Millionaire. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and he himself was, grew up on the streets and, you know, all this, to see how God is using him to or, to help orphaned children as well as equip pastors to create churches. Like, it's, in my lifetime, I'll never be able to have that resume. Like, when you look at, like, how many churches you started? Like, you know, you're like, what? I remember when he was talking and <laughs> right. we were sitting next to each other and he starts, like, kind of talking just very nonchalantly about yeah. all the different pastors that he's equipping and how they, you know, they have, they have these little tiny churches. But you're sitting there, you're doing the math and you you lean over and you're like, that's like 400,000 people. 400,000 people. <laughs> you're like, like <laughs> what's your day job? Oh, I don't know. I just oversee 400,000 people. Yeah. Like, gosh, okay. Um, so he's going to be here next week. Uh, he's going to be here at service this Sunday, and he'll be on the podcast. So I, I think Man, that's just going to be that. that's awesome. so incredible to get yeah. to hear the story and to be a part of what God's doing um, on the other side of the world. Cool. Um, and then we're going to continue. Um, it's an international focus, but it's not on the other side of the world. It's like right south of us mm -hmm. with uh, Building Homes in Mexico, which has been a great partnership that... It's been huge. Um, we weren't sure how it was going to go. We were trying to figure out that initiative itself. Jamie and I took the kids on a home building trip uh, with an actual different organization. Mm -hmm. So this was such an awesome way to provide, but also do a family thing. So I said, okay, let's let's see if we can do this for the Christmas offering. And then we partnered with uh, YWAM Homes of Hope, Yep, built 10 homes. And then we had people just like this this changed my life. And so they're going back and you got people, you know, like just giving just crazy amounts of money to building homes. And yep. we've got bosses that are taking their, their, their staff down there now. And, and so we're like, we just got to keep doing this because as people are on mission mm -hmm. and people are being the hands and feet of Jesus in these areas and seeing just radical poverty, like that, that what you, the perspective of it yeah, all, yeah. Perspective, all those all those factors, like it is such an incredible opportunity to go down to Tijuana and Ensenada and build these homes. And so we're going to keep doing that this year with, I mean, God willing, build another three, four, five homes um, through the Christmas offering this year, which would put us over 20 homes in, so cool. in a few years. So, And I, I love going down and building the home. Um, I'm going to do it in a couple of weeks here. So, oh, Are you going if, on that Yeah. One? So if you're, if, you're, you're doing that. if you're on that team, I'm going to be excited to get to work alongside you. Um, but what I've noticed is that when you get perspective from seeing people in need, it stirs generosity inside of you. Yeah. And I, I've noticed that it happens even at a young age. I remember like trying to teach my kids, and I'm sure you've done this too, trying to teach your kids gratitude. Mm -hmm. And my, my middle child, Emery, she's so soft hearted and cute. Um, she's kind of like your hope in, in this way. You say my other kids aren't like that. Yeah, uh, they are too. <laughs> but but hope has this extremely no, like I, soft heart, right? Compassion yeah, heart. She does. But I remember like literally talking to Emery and sharing with her like what kids in like India had to go through and things like that, and and how she needs to be thankful for like Christmas or birthday gifts or something like that. And she literally started crying, and she was very serious. She wanted to pack up all of her gifts and send them to India. Yeah. And so it, it's true. I think that happens for us as a adults too. Mm -hmm. When we get perspective of people who don't have, 
and we realize how wealthy and blessed we are materialistically yeah. and provisionally, like it makes us, it stirs something inside of us that, as Christians. And I think it's the Holy Spirit doing the work that says we need to be salt and light. And part of that is by opening your hands with what God has given you to make sure that you are being a blessing to others and being a light that would shine brightly so people might see your good works and then glorify Father, Father. your Father in heaven. Yeah. And so uh, I love the Christmas offering. So yeah. you asked yeah. me before this, you said, do you hate it? Do you love it? I love it. And the yeah. reason why is because one, I love seeing people get on mission, whether it's they're going to give a dollar or a penny, I don't know. Yeah. They're going to give it to something or they're going to give and get engaged and involved yeah. in actually doing the work of the ministry with their hands or their feet or their mouths or whatever they're doing. I love watching all that happen and also the synergy that happens in our church that I believe will make us a church full of more committed disciples of Jesus. Mm. Because the more generous we are, the more committed we are to the work of the Lord, the better disciples we're, disciples of Jesus we will be. And we're going to get to see, and I know you always make fun of me for this, but we're going to get to see the world change. And I may, it's probably not going to be the whole world. I don't world. make fun of him for that. Yes, he always goes, change the world, guys. Because <laughs> <And so, laughs> if you drink a cup of coffee, you'll change the world with Robert. That's Let's why do I, it. Yeah, yes. So. It may not change the whole world, but I might change we'll the change world some world that's right yeah okay. and that that's it man i really do believe that <laughs> I do that too and so anyway i'm pumped about this excited for a christmas offering coming up and to see what our church does and and, yeah. and what god does through it yeah. he always and does you know and I, I think just like pull back the curtain just one more kind of layer like mm -hmm. you know when when you lead in a church or you've started something you know there's there's aspects of like you know, like what is based upon the staff's talents that cause the church to like grow? Mm -hmm. And then where is there also deep reliance on God, we need you to do something yes, in this? Both. Um, I think this is one of those things for me and I think for our staff, but I think I probably feel it a little bit more just based on my role. Like to give away a half a million dollars is what the last couple of years has been. Um, I mean, that's that's like 25% of our budget. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so now there's one thing, that, what, it, what it says is is on some levels, like that money wasn't being given anyway to Rice City Church, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because people give out of different pockets. Absolutely. But it also is like, it's one of those things that a lot of, and this isn't me saying what right or wrong. I'm saying there's a lot of churches that will use the Christmas end of year giving to either finish the budget out or to to go after the next thing for the church. Yeah. And I think that that this is something that what's become to me is like saying, you know, I could we as Rise City Church use a half a million dollars more? Always. <laughs> I mean, I got plenty of ideas. You do too, yeah. right? Yes. But um, to give that away and to watch people give in that way places us in dependence on the Lord and reliance to say, mm -hmm. what you've given us to operate with, we'll be faithful with, and you've given us exactly what we need to accomplish what That's you right. have us to accomplish. And this element, like, you know, this is, this, is, this is a move of God. Like, you're just, thank you. Thank you for letting me watch how people give in this manner. Yep. It doesn't benefit us in terms of like our own budget. Um, and it does at times cause us to have more reliance because if we didn't do the Christmas offering, we could push harder in the realms of generosity at Rise and mm -hmm. maybe see some of that come to the church. Um, and then we'd use that in different ways. But I think that it's just taught me that like, just reminded me the open-handedness and the you can't outgive God. And, um, you know, I have friends in the, in the, kind of pastoral world. I think we are absolutely crazy. <laughs> I think we're nuts. I've heard it. <laughs> for doing yeah. this. So like, what do you, why would you do that? Like, yeah. Cause they like, do that year end giving is what makes up so much of their buffer and their budget. Yeah. Or why, why not like do a big project? Like, you know, we're getting ready to at some point, God willing, we're supposed to build a youth room in fourth and fifth grade and do courts. And yeah. Um, a half million dollars would really serve that well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, um, but we're not taking a big offering for that. We're simply going to give a lot of money away, and then we're going to hope that God provides and has provided that we've got savings to do the yeah. other project. And that's not saying one's right or wrong. It's just saying for for me personally, it's huge for us. Yeah, 
it's 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 a place where we find great reliance on the Lord and celebrate that this is His activity and what He yeah. does, and even how He works in all the distribution of the funds. Like we can't control it, and I think that hands off piece keeps my hands open because yeah. then it's like that was the Lord. Yeah. So and y'all, that is real because I will tell you that even in a meeting not that that long ago, we were looking at the budget. Oh yeah, and we're there were some concerns and things like that. And and it was an amazing time. I mean, not concerns. I don't want to <laughs> freak anyone out. But uh, but there was things where we realized, man, like if we had an extra half a million dollars, I could just go into this. That would just help so much. Yeah. And and what we did at the end of that meeting is we just prayed and asked God to be the provider. And, and there was such a reliance on Jesus to say, you know what, like we can try to come up with our own ideas about how to raise money, and we will be diligent on those yeah. things. We'll be wise on those things. But at the same time, we want to trust in the Lord with all our hearts yeah. and not try to lean on our own understanding, our own plans, our own provisions, but rather trust God because we believe that He has more than we could ever think or imagine. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but that's the type of church I want to be, man. I want to be those type of people of God that yeah. would trust in the Lord. And so thank you for your leadership in that. Well, appreciate just how many people have just said yes. Yeah. And so, so yeah, Sunday, December the 10th, you can um, already give now if you want. Some people aren't here on that actual day, so they like to give in advance. Mm-hmm. You can go to risecchurch.com slash give. Make sure you select Christmas offering in the the down the drop, drop down, down menu. menu. Um, and if not, then like I said, on the 10th, we'll all come together. We'll celebrate. And that's always fun. Everybody come cool. up and put their contributions in the boxes or yeah. click their donation on the phones. Um, and as Robert mentioned, you know, like this year we're just saying, hey, what it look like? Can you give six hundred and fifty dollars? Some of you, man, you can add a couple zeros to that, or maybe one zero. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of people are going to do a couple four four zeros. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Uh, if you had four zeros, and you're going to pay for the project out back too, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> yes, but and some that if some people like your your act of sacrificial generosity is like, man, I I got fifty bucks. Can I tell you that is just as significant as the person who gives five thousand? Yeah. And I want that to be heard and understood, like same. because it all comes in the same pot and it's all distributed. Mm-hmm. And so we're just thankful and we celebrate every single penny, every single dollar. We, the high school, the middle school ministries, the kids ministry—they're all giving. We don't, we don't know. We just boom, and then we give it away. And so, um, prayerfully consider how you can contribute. And um, it's going to be cool to celebrate. We always announce on the Christmas Eve service the what the, the grand total is. So yeah. So yeah, that was our improv digging yeah. deeper Christmas Be part offering of edition. That's bigger than yourself, it's exciting. Um, I'm going to nominate Pete Goodman to receive funds for medicine. How do you, what do you think about that? I don't know if we can nominate staff. <laughs> we it's can't. Against that's against the rules. rules. <laughs> but I am going to nominate. But if you want to nominate Pete system. for a uh, <laughs> for something, something man. yeah, for some kind of like healthcare. I'm not sure what <laughs> <laughs> is wrong with them. Some vitamins. If you know of like some vitamins that might help them, you no, should. No, no, you no. Should, don't open that door. <laughs> don't open that door. <laughs> Don't open that. Pete is going to get so many emails. <laughs> <laughs> you should sign up for my subscription service. Pete at risecchurch.com. He would uh, love for you to email <laughs> all health related recommendations for him. <laughs> this is going to be his least favorite digging deeper yeah. ever. Ben's just shaking his head. He's got his hands above his head and just shaking his head like. On that this, note, yeah. we should probably wrap this up We're before done. we uh, uh, just offend Pete. For, for you. But <laughs> Pete, we are praying for you. We miss you, man. And uh, everyone else, thanks for joining us on Digging Deeper. See you later. Thank you.